you can see here I've added a whole new row of controls to my my GUI here so that we can play around with the perspective matrix arguments. Let me go back to our original code. We have this perspective call that is, this matrix is responsible for essentially smushing our three-dimensional scene into a two-dimensional scene, keeping a little bit of depth. We'll talk about that. It takes four arguments here. This one is the field of view. We have the aspect ratio. We have the near plane and the far plane. In the next few videos, I'm going to talk about these arguments one by one, and we will begin with the field of view. Let's go back to my application here. Uh, let's drop the cube into the scene, push it out in the negative Z direction in front of the camera. And I'm actually going to move our viewpoint somewhat perpendicular to the side here, get as close as I can to this this red plane in my in my scene. Oh, a little bit too low. And and the field of view is is essentially a measure of degrees. You'll notice I had 60 degrees in the code. It's a measure of degrees that determines how wide our field of view is. Hence, it's called field of view. This I will say this is our sweep or our angle. I shall call it theta because we like to call angles theta. And I'll get a thicker pen so hopefully you can see that theta. And if you remember when we talked about perspective projection before, the way we do a perspective projection is things that are closer to our eye take up more of the overall surface area. For example, this is all of the surface area at this point where this side of the cube is. And the cube is taking up a lot of that. Okay, there's not much up here. There's not much down here. Remember, I talked about my fingernail being in front of my eye versus the mountains that are far away. Even though the mountains are much larger than my fingernail, my fingernail looks huge because my fingernail is close to my eye. Well, the back of the box doesn't take up that much of the overall room. If I could extend this up and extend this all the way down. The back of the box has all this leeway up here and all this leeway down here. So even though the back of the box is the same height as the front of the box, the front of the box takes up more of the overall surface area simply because it's closer to the viewpoint. Now the field of view simply determines how wide this angle is. For example, if I bring my field of view smaller, if I took it in that direction, then my field of view would collapse something like this. You can see that the back of the box is, take, is taking up less surface area than the front of the box. The front of the box will look huge. And this effect, this new theta, it has the effect of zooming in. Okay, As my field of view goes less, then I see less of the box because my field of view is not as wide. Okay, Now let's go the other direction. If I take my field of view nice and large, then this will actually get bigger. And now the front of the box is actually going to take up less surface area than it did with this white area field of view, because I'll have all this leeway up here and all this leeway down here. And so that has the effect of zooming out. Okay, This is much how regular cameras work. They just adjust the amount of light rays that can hit the focal point of the camera. And by moving lenses back and forth, essentially it's... It, adjust your field of view. Let's actually see it from the camera's point of view. I'm going to say fix our eye to the camera position and I'll grab the slider and if I slide it to the left that'll make our field of view smaller and you can see our box gets really big but if I go to the right then our field of view gets larger and the box is taking up less of the overall space or surface area of our projection there. So anyway, large field of view, small field of view, large field of view, small field of view. We don't generally change these during gameplay. In fact, I've found about 60 is good for me. I like 60, but maybe you want it I don't know, larger for some reason or smaller. It just depends on how zoomed in you want to be. Let's go back to our regular viewpoint here. And I actually changed the program up a little bit. Right now we're not seeing the cube in this projected space. We haven't smashed the cube yet. And you know if I grab this slider, we'll smash the cube. But I want you to pay attention to what I did to the camera here once we start moving that slider. One little move and the camera disappears. Why? Because we're going to projected space. When the camera would sit there and be stuck there, it made me feel like we, were, we still had the camera viewpoint, but we don't. Once we go from camera viewpoint to projected space, or more correctly, camera space 
to project it. But the camera doesn't ex exist anymore. But we'll talk about that in more detail when we talk about this near plane and far plane. Anyway, camera disappears. But as I smash this in, we'll go to projected space. You'll see this, the size of our cube here. The front of the cube takes up most of the room there in our projection. If I fix the eye to the camera, you can see we have this little bit of gap around the cube. A little bit of gap, a little bit of gap, a little bit of gap. And what I probably should have done in this program is render a Z plane with units on it. But if I come out here and just kind of fly our camera down, you'll see that, well, actually you can see it on the, on the X plane there. The X plane, there's a little bit of leeway here and then out here there's a little bit of leeway there what we're seeing there is this space right here just that little bit and that little bit remember when we go to that two-dimensional screen space we're going from negative one to one in the x negative one to one in the y negative one to one in the z and the z is simply for depth so going back to our our other view here if i did have a a XY plane, then we'd see something similar. I'm going to freehand this as best I can, but we'd see a little bit of gap over here, and a little bit of gap over here, and this would be Y equals 1, this line I'm drawing right now. That'd be Y equals 1, and this is X equals 1, but in the XY plane. And then down here, there'd be a little bit of gap. You see how I crossed right here at the unit 1? Cross down. Well, the gap's not that big. My hand is messing that up. But then there'd be a little bit of gap down there, so on and so forth. So when we go to that projected space, we, st we still have this little bit of room here because we're going, as I said earlier, let me say again, we're going from negative 1 on the x. That's a negative 1. This is negative 1 on the x to positive 1 on the x. This is down here. This will be roughly about here. Would be negative one in the y and positive one in the y. And let's let's look at that from our fixed eye camera, our two-dimensional screen space. What what we had before now maps to negative one out here on the two-dimensional x-axis to positive one out here on the two-dimensional x-axis. You know I've drawn this axis for you before in our two-dimensional view and then the same thing on the y here's our two-dimensional y axis you can't see the bottom of the screen but this is positive one on the y negative one on the y is down down here where you can't see it but anyway that's really cool how we can go from a three-dimensional coordinate system to hey you know what let's treat them like two-dimensional coordinates so this is 3d 2d 3d 2D, 3D, 2D. All right, nice tangent there. Let's, in this view, let's mess around with this field of view argument. Remember when I move this to the right, our field of view gets larger. That's what we're looking at. It gets smaller. And when I move it to the left, our field of view comes down and gets thinner. And that's what we're looking at. It gets larger. Okay, I hope you kind of see that. Let's fly out here just so we can kind of get a better feel of what's going on. Zooming out, zooming in. Zooming out. Look at that. We could zoom way out. <laughs> I wonder. 169 degrees. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that's kind of cool. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> anyway, that's the field of view argument.